a lot of like crazy stuff that we never imagined could happen. Like we're getting calls like out of nowhere. Hey, you want to come play the show? Like, oh my goodness, that's like months in advance. Why do you want us to come play a show? Like we were booking shows in 2018 for 2019. It's so crazy. So definitely a lot of shows that we've never played before. A lot of places that we haven't gone to yet. So it's looking really packed. Yeah, like it's, it's gonna exciting. be a very packed year. But lots we're of, really excited for that. Yeah, lots of music, lots of videos, lots of exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. definitely a lot of always like releasing stuff. So that's exciting too. Um, I think for individually, uh, we it's probably just for everyone, just bettering ourselves at like our own instrument and. Um, I mean, we, we all agree that you can always get better. Like, there's never a point where you are, like, you're there. You're like, oh, I can, I'm done practicing, you know? <laughs> so definitely bettering ourselves. And then um, I think for a band, we just travel a lot and uh, reach as many people as we can reach because mm -hmm. that's all in all the goal of the band is yeah. to reach the people of our age and older or younger. Um, just getting more exposure because we are kind of a smaller band still. So getting that exposure, getting those bigger shows, getting those bigger tours, um, getting like the views on our YouTube channel, stuff like that. Just having the fans be able to support us um, as much as they have already, it's really, that's like, we couldn't be going without our fans. So it means a lot for them to be sharing all of our stuff and to be coming to shows. But definitely that's probably... The biggest challenge is just getting more of that and growing, to, like our team GFM, just growing our little family um, as a fan base. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much the biggest thing, just getting more exposure. Oh, definitely all the time. Like, we get it more than people actually think, but it doesn't really affect us because, like, that's not what we do it for. It's not for the validation, not so people know our name or people are like, Oh well, you did that like better than guys, or we're better than guys. Like we, we don't really care. Like we do this one because we love the music and we love doing it as a family, and two is to spread like God's word, and that's our, that's our purpose. We really care less what anyone and what thinks. I don't know ourselves. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard to perform in front of your peers sometimes, especially mm -hmm. if it's like a touring band that either you're really close to or someone that you look up to, it's kind of hard to do that because they are more experienced sometimes or like just as much experience as you. So they're gonna know exactly what tiny things you messed up. And I mean, they do it for their living. So yeah. I mean, anytime we go anywhere now, it's like you can hear stuff that you never before could hear just because of like all the tours we've done and everything that we've learned. Yeah, it's hard so, to like enjoy the show now because yeah. we know all the stuff that goes into it. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's probably the biggest, like. Like, and not saying it's a bad thing because we definitely we learn all the time from mm -hmm. criticism. Like and a lot of it's constructive criticism, especially if it's your friends. They'll be like, "Okay, hey, change this," and it'll help a lot. So it, yeah, we thrive on that yeah. because we know we're not perfect and we need help. <laughs> <laughs> on stage, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> on stage, they're like, "Please don't hurt me." Uh, <laughs> on stage, what is going on? <laughs> um, I feel like. I mean, for offstage, we're pretty chill, laid-back people. Um, we're not, like, super extreme, but we are super weird. So, you know, sometimes people meet us and they're like, what are you doing? Like, why are you yelling and, like, making weird noises? Like, this is not normal. Um, but, you know, we just, we're kind of ourselves and kind of weird offstage. Well, I think with Lou, a lot of people don't understand how tall she is. So yeah. when they see her, they're like, whoa, hey. <laughs> so, um, but then like, especially at the merch table, I feel like people, they, they always come up to us like, I can't believe you came up to the merch table, you talked to us. Like, like you took the time to actually like, respond to us on social media. And then when we came to the show, you were there and you were talking to us. And I think that's something that's really cool to just always get that from people. Mm -hmm. Because we definitely always want to give back to our fans because that's like, that's the reason we're doing it. Like, if nobody was at the show, then, then we couldn't play a show. Yeah. So we think we, more people should go out to the merch table. Yeah, we, we always want to go to the merch tables, and we always encourage the bands that we're playing with to go out to the merch tables to talk to people, because I know it definitely, like, if we were at a show watching a band, we would want to go meet the band at yeah. the merch table, so. I mean, if you're going to support our band, and you're going to help us out, you know, give us gas money, or, like, Buy wear our shirts, yeah. which is super cool, 
you know, we want to meet you guys, and honestly, like, that's the whole reason that our band is doing what it's doing, is because we have people supporting us, and so we want to meet everyone. But I think on stage, it's just super energetic, and we're yeah. super, like, back and forth, and so I guess people, the first impression is like, I want to have fun, like, yeah. they're having fun on stage, I want to have fun. Uh -huh. Mostly, like, why are you doing it? Um, and, like, why are you, uh, like, invested in me? Because, like, that's why we go. Like, we were saying we go to the merch table. We take time to talk to individually everyone, hear their story, and let us share what we believe, share our story. Because we kind of say, like, if you don't put it out there, then it's kind of selfish. Because if you, what you believe is true, and you're not putting it out there, I mean. But people are so, uh, like, curious and like, why we're so invested in people and why we actually, like, want to touch them, want to, like, understand them, um, so. It's kind of, like, a weird question, though. Like, if someone's like, hey, and they ask, like, a weird question, like, oh, okay. So uh, about, a like, lot of people say, like, why the dark makeup, or why the dark kind of ambiance? Um, why the cheerleading outfit? Yeah, why the cheerleading outfit? Yeah, really popular one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's just kind of, again, our personality. I guess. It's just, like, it's costumes, like, having fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I, I can't really think of, like, a weird one. I guess we'll get more of that as we get bigger. <laughs> I think like, people are kind of scared to ask us weird questions just because we're so young. So like, oh, I don't want to freak them out. Well, it's definitely something that we like stand strong with because we have the I Will Not Be Silent campaign and it's always just speaking out about what you're struggling with, whether it's with anxiety or depression or suicide or self-harm. And I think that aligns well with the Me Too movement because it's very much about, you know, don't be silent, just you need to open up and say it. Because yeah. that's the biggest thing is building awareness. And nobody's going to be aware of any of the issues that are going on if you don't speak out about it. So it's definitely something that we would support, especially being women in the industry. We want more women to talk about it because that's the only way to become strong women is to speak out and to stand up against it. Because no one knows what's going on in your mind. You're the only person that actually knows the whole story. And you could see like anyone in a crowd and you would have no idea what they're going through. Because people are really good about putting up like a fake persona. And uh, you just have no idea. So that's why we love asking people stuff and investing. Because they've already built on these walls. And that's what we're trying to break down. <laughs> yep, very good. Uh, well, it's very much, we, like, go out of our way to not, like, be seductive in any way or to, like, objectify ourselves. Because a lot of people think that because of the cheerleading outfits or, like, the fishnets or the tights that we wear. But they just like wearing very dresses much. and, like, being, like, girly. And we wanted to show that you can be a girly girl and love, like, the heavier music. I mean, Maggie screams like, <laughs> lower than some of the guys we know. And it's nothing to do with like sexualizing ourselves. It's just being like who you are as like a young woman, and we love doing that. We're we not saying it's wrong. Have like fun, like with because yeah. we feel like everyone takes themselves way too seriously, <laughs> yeah. and we're like at our ages, we don't want to already take ourselves seriously and then keep doing the band. And as we're getting older, we just start like super like. We don't want to have fun. We're gonna play our shows, and we're gonna go, and then we're not gonna have fun. Like, we want to be. We want to have fun. And we're teenagers. We want to dress up on stage and hang out and create an energy and just just for, to forget about like the struggles and like what you're dealing with and just have just like a create like a family ambiance like you're safe here and it's okay to like like this type of music and still have a positive like outlook and not hate the world yeah. and like hate yourself um, but yeah that's trying like what we're trying to push <laughs> We definitely we want to follow Jesus' footsteps when he like he went and hung out with sinners at a bar. He went and talked to prostitutes and helped them re like recreate their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's definitely what we want to do. We want to be able to kind of disguise ourselves into those places. So like we're, if we play at a bar, or if we play at a general market venue, or if we play at a, a giant general market festival, like. We did that in 2018, and some of the Christians were kind of weird about it because we were playing with bands like Johnny Pole and 
disturbed. And they're like, well, you shouldn't be playing that because those are bands that do not promote Christianity at all. And they promote exactly the opposite. And we kind of want to be like, we the Trojan save them, horse yeah. a little bit. Because who's going to reach them? The people. And it's not yeah. necessarily that we want to deceive those people and be like, ha, got you, we're actually Christians. Um, we want to be able to just be ourselves and, mm -hmm. and to be connected with them because that's what we love. Like yeah. We love like the darker outfits. It's not representing yeah. like who we are. We yeah. just love the color. I mean, it's, it's uh -huh. the color. And we also, like the, some of the stuff like in our music and our lyrics and in our videos, it's stuff that we have dealt with. And so when we put it out there for people to see, you know, some people aren't going to agree with it or like it, but then we're also going to have the people that it reaches. They're like, I'm struggling with the same thing. Or, this really helped me through this tough time because mm -hmm. I feel the exact same way. And those are the people that we we can talk to and we're like, yeah, like we understand what you're going through. And so there's gonna be people that don't agree with it and don't like the certain stuff we put out, but we, like all in all, we wanna put out the stuff and like we want people to know that we're not some people that they can't talk to. We are teenagers that they can come and talk to about their problems because we deal with it all the time. Well, in the end, Jesus said to be in the world, not of the world. So it's very much being in the world and then trying to be that light that's inside this, yeah. with these people who are dealing with all this dark stuff. And we're not afraid to show our struggles and to show that we're not perfect. And I feel like that's a problem that Christians have today is like they like to put on the perfect persona. And I feel that's well, like it's get, hurting people because they see like, well, I'm not that yeah. perfect, so I can't reach that. Standard. I feel like a lot of people get stuck in this box where you're not allowed to do anything if it does not follow these exact guidelines. And that's not what Christianity is about. That's not what Jesus is about. He's about loving people and embracing yourself, embracing other people, and just showing unconditional love towards them. Um, and and maybe just to go together yeah. as a team and, like, you're not alone. Like, we, it's, we're supposed to help each other, hold each other's hands, and walk step by step. I feel like, um, uh, but something that we definitely are very aware of, because, mm -hmm. um, like pretty much daily, we're getting DMs from people on social media who are saying that they've struggled with either suicidal thoughts or they've been self-harming, and they come across our band and they watch our videos, and it gave them the the strength to like live another day because they saw that we were coming to their area in like a week, so they decided that they would at least hold off a week to come see us in concert and then seeing us, they, they t decided that, you know what, if this is a life worth living, I want to keep going. So that, that's the most powerful thing that we've, like, we've experienced. And um, it's been multiple times that we've had those stories. And like, that's the whole thing is crazy, to have that much power, um, not over somebody, but that much power to help somebody. And that's really crazy. And so we definitely are aware of that. And we strive for our music to be able to have an impact on someone positively. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's making people question a lot uh, mm -hmm. because we're unapologetically who we are and we're not going to change whether, because we play a lot of general market venues and we play a lot of churches and youth groups for youth groups and we don't change for whoever we play. We we share uh, the gospel to each in individual person that God like leads us to. And uh, they take it, they take it. Like, yeah, they take the take. We say from the stage, like there's a God and he loves each and every one of you. Um, like we play with Johnny Pool and said that in front of like 500 to 800 people, and uh, like that was a blessing. And I think with just on the industry, also with the women like empowerment mm -hmm. and everything, we are. I mean, we created Beauty Core, and now we have bands that are like, yeah, we're a Beauty Core band too, and we're like, what? Yeah. This is so crazy. Yeah, like hashtagging it, and they're like, this is about it. it's cool. But this is just something we were joking about before, yeah. and now <laughs> we've made it something that's like, like an actual. Uh, genre. So yeah. I think we're also making a, like, helping the woman's empowerment, I guess. Well, like, even on top of that, because I think it also brings hope to the smaller bands, because we're doing a lot of stuff that smaller bands don't really get to do. Like, we're getting mm -hmm. headline spots in these giant festivals, and we're getting, like, really far slots. Even if it's not a headline spot, we're playing, like, really close to the headliner at, like, these giant general market festivals. And, you know, that's not something that necessarily, like, we feel should happen to us. And we're like, why is this happening? Like, this is really, really cool. And we were really, really grateful for it. But, like, we haven't been doing this for that long, and we're getting all these amazing opportunities. So I think it's bringing hope to a lot of these smaller bands um, and just encouraging.
encouraging them to keep going because it's definitely worth it to continue to spread that positivity through music. Yeah. I mean, the fact we don't we don't really go by a Christian band because we don't believe that a band can be Christian. Um, we are a positive message band with Christian members. Um, and so all of our lyrics are positive based, you know, and we're going to speak about the struggles that we deal with. We're going to speak about the real things in the world that we want to talk about, but we're not going to, our message is more of where individually speaking to our fans. So mm -hmm. it's kind of almost like you say the Trojan horse. So what uh, our message and our lyrics necessarily isn't like straightforward, like Jesus loves you and God is real. It's more of like a positive message and almost so we can get into those areas and we can speak individually face to face which is i see is way more important than mm -hmm. having your lyrics preached to someone well because having sometimes preaching lyrics will turn people off especially yeah. in the um in like a community who is people are not christians yeah. so we definitely want to keep them kind of open to where they can accept them as well but it can leave them questioning mm -hmm. and i think that's what is the kind of difference because those bands we were talking about, it, they're like, oh, this is just fun music. Let's just listen to it, sing along. Um, but it doesn't always leave them questioning, like, whoa, wait, what were they actually talking about? Yeah. And that's something that we always want to involve in our lyric writing. And we're not saying that that music is that bad. is very forward yeah. is not yeah. bad. It's just yeah. this is what works for us. And we, like, we read the Bible, and it says, go and preach to the world the, the gospel. And this is the way that's working for us. Yeah, a bunch of people do it different ways. So yeah, we're just there's no, like, blueprint yeah. plan. Yeah but this is what we do. It's a very, it's different long every song really. process. Well, like, sometimes it's a very long process, but also other times it's very short. Like mm -hmm. the whole thing, I feel like people think that this is how you write a song. You sit down, you do this, and then you do this and this, <laughs> and the song's done. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, it might work sometimes for other people, it works. but that does not work for us. Like we, every single time we do it, it's completely different and even like with the people we like write with sometimes it's different so it really depends who you're writing with what mood you're in like how you are feeling at that time <laughs> like if you are like in a deep place and you're writing I feel like songwriting goes really quickly but then like if you're trying to think like you're, it's a normal day and you're like alright we need to write a song today you go to write lyrics and you're like I have nothing <laughs> yeah. so I feel like it's different every time but generally speaking it's usually because we all write lyrics from from everyone's story so we can get a different perspective. It's not just one person writing. Um, just for instance, we used um, Maggie's lyrics one time, and so we use the lyrics, and then we kind of write around that, and then we bring up a riff of like a guitar riff, and then we get the bass from that, and then we do drums, and so it's like specifically- it's Kind of like building on yeah, top of the Yeah, it's like platform. building blocks. Yeah. But it's just a fun process. And it includes a lot of snack. Yeah, <laughs> it includes <laughs> snacking is key. Because we never have any idea what the song is going to end with. Yeah. Um, that's the fun part. And it always yeah. changes, too. The like rough draft changes completely. Yeah. Um, whenever we go to actually record it, we're like, why did we write that? That is so stupid. Yeah, I feel like we never had the end game in mind. We're always just like, you know what, let's just do whatever. And then like it'll turn into whatever. <laughs> but it's always fun. <laughs> build the energy. Yeah. So our dad, he describes it as like a flame taking off. So he's like, you start here, then you gotta keep them going, keep them going, keep going, and then you finally take off. And like sometimes we'll build set lists and he's like, you know what, you like kinda started going and then you like you crash. Yeah. So like we want our plane to list. already be taken off. Like at the beginning of the set, we want like to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Probably, whenever we like people ask like what should we prepare for? We just prepare for fun, energy, like a good time. Like forget everything you're dealing with and come and just have a good time and that's how we build setlist. We're like, what? Do, like, first of all, what do we want to play? Mm -hmm. Because you know, all in all, we are being the ones who are playing it. And then, what do our fans want to see us play? Yeah. What songs do they love? And what's gonna like keep the energy up? And well, I feel like it changes depending on crowds or like, especially like acoustic shows. They'll obviously change. But then also, sometimes if we're playing a festival, we'll play different sets than if we're playing a church or just a venue. Yeah. And so it's definitely just feeling out the crowd sometimes and especially if we've been there before like we know okay these people like these songs so we'll play them mm -hmm. and a lot of people sometimes complain like oh you didn't play chatter or evil eyes well, like we want to play the heaviest like upbeat songs so mm -hmm. if it's an acoustic show we'll, like, we'll yeah. definitely play like the mellower songs 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.